Hello and welcome to Love Muslims Critique Islam Part 11 Science. Throughout this series of videos uh, I'll be sharing with you the truth of Islam that you won't get from the mainstream media and you won't get from Muslims. So let me reveal to you the secrets Imams don't want you to know and take you on a journey of absolute truth. And astonishingly, uh, for a book sent down from the Divine Allah himself, the Quran has an awful lot of scientific errors. Uh, so let's, um, let's show you a few, shall we? Uh, let's go into uh, reproduction. So we uh, read this in uh, Surah 2314 um, on reproduction. Uh, we created man from an extract of clay, uh, then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement firmly fixed. Uh, then we made the drop into uh, an alaka, which is like um, uh, a leech. Uh, then we made the alaka into a magda, like a, a chewed substance. And we made from the magda um, bones, and we covered the bones with flesh. Then we developed him into another creation. So, blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Now, there are so many inaccuracies in this passage uh, that describe the uh, embryo formation. Starting off as uh, an extraction of clay, uh, being a drop of blood clot, uh, and the flesh is covering the bones. Uh, it's rather like a, a sculpture, really, uh, and uh, with a, a modern clay. Uh, rather than a baby evolving whilst attached to the inside of its mother. In the uh, works of the esteemed uh, Greek and Turkish physicians of their day, Hippocrates and uh, Galen, uh, we have the same description of an embryo uh, in their ancient scientific texts as in the Quran uh, when it was compiled after. Uh, it is therefore credible to suggest that the author simply copied these works uh, of the uh, earlier ancient scholars and claimed it uh, as uh, divine revelation uh, for, the, for the Quran. And therefore we read this uh, in the Quran, Surah 86, verses 5 to 7. It says, So let man consider of which stuff he is created. He is created of spouting water that comes out from between the loins and the chest bones. So there you go. And now I don't know what you were like in your biology class, but I don't remember semen originating from an area between just below the rib cage um, and not from the uh, seminal vesicle uh, and the uh, in the pelvis and, and the testicle. In Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, Book 73, Hadith 113, this is a narration uh, by Zainab bid Um Salama, and a conversation between Um Salam and Muhammad. And she asks, O oh, Allah's Apostle, verily Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. Is it essential for a woman to take a bath after she had a wet dream? And he says, well, yes, if, if she notices discharge. And she laughs and she says, well, does a woman get an eternal sexual discharge? She says, well, yes. Then how does a son resemble her, his mother? Um, so women have semen too, apparently. Um, as confirmed in the conversation that um, when a woman discharges her semen first, then the son will look like um, uh, his mother. Um, Another one. When the news of the arrival of the Prophet at Medina reached Abdullah bin Salam, uh, he went to him to ask him about certain things. And he said, um, I am going to ask you about three things which only a Prophet can answer. Why does a child attract the similarity to his father or to his mother? And the Prophet replied, well, um, Gabriel has just in now informed me. See, he has these convenient revelations, uh, does Mohammed. Uh, it's rather like a, a Sky Sports reporter on Sky News. I think, oh, we just heard that Liverpool scored, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, 
So anyway, he says, uh, well, as for the child, if the man's discharge precedes the woman's discharge, the child attracts a similarity to the man. And if the woman's discharge precedes the man's, then the child attracts the similarity to the woman. And on this, Abdullah bin Salam says, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that you are the messenger of Allah. So that's, uh, that's him satisfied. So again, Muhammad gets these convenient uh, uh, revelations and, um, you know, um, answering that particular question uh, on, on how children look like their parents. Uh, so his answer depends on uh, which parent has an orgasm first. So let's see if it does any better with geology. So we get our answers once again from the Quran and we read this in uh, Surah 78 verses 6 to 7. Uh, Have we not made the earth as a bed and the mountains as pegs? In Surah 50 verse 7, uh, and the earth we spread out and cast therein firmly set mountains and may grow therein um, something of every beautiful kind uh, in surah 2053 uh, it says it is he who has made for you the earth as a bed spread out and inserted therein for you roadways and sent down from the sky rain and produced thereby categories of various plants and finally, uh, in Surah 88, verse 20, and at the earth, how is it spread out? Well, uh, here we go. Uh, Quranic verses suggesting a flat earth with mountains pegged and secured down as if planted. Uh, but what are they pegged to? Who knows? So let's see what Muhammad knows about astronomy. Well, we'll have a look at uh, this uh, Surah 67.5. Uh, it says, and we have decorated the nearest sky with lamps and have made them devices to stone the devils and we have prepared for them the punishment of hell. Um, so it's describing the cosmos. Uh, the Quran is teaching that the stars are just really missiles to be thrown at the devil. So what else about the cosmos? Well, um, in Surah 2130, it says, uh, have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth are one connected entity uh, then we separated them well you know okay let's give uh, Alan a little bit of credit here could this be an insight into the big bang and the expanding universe um but um okay this knowledge uh, this theory um or this fact whichever way you want to look at it was was well known even then and taught by older civilizations uh, like um, Hindus and uh, Egyptians, for example. So this is not news. An oration uh, by Abu Dar. Uh, this is in uh, Sunan Abu um, Dawud, uh, 3991, where he's reciting a conversation he's having he's had with uh, Muhammad. Uh, I was sitting behind the apostle of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked. Do you know where this sets? Uh, and I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Uh, and he said, well, it sets in a spring of warm water. There are other narrations um, from Abu Dhar um, reciting conversations of this ilk. Uh, one where he says that uh, the sun must ask permission to set. Now, uh, Muhammad's impressing his traveling companion uh, with his knowledge of how the sun sets, uh, clearly not understanding the Earth's orbit around the sun. So no marks yet again for Muhammad. Well, how about his um, hygiene skills? In uh, Sahir al-Bukhari 537, uh, narrated by uh, Abu uh, Huraya, uh, the Prophet said, if a housefly falls in the drink of any of you, he should dip it in the drink, uh, for one of its wings has a disease and the other has a cure for the disease. In Sunan Abu Dawood uh, 67, I heard that the people asked the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, uh, water is brought for you from the well of Buddha 
It is a well in which dead dogs, menstrual cloths, and excrement of people are thrown. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, replied, Verily, water is pure and is not defiled by anything. Hmm, clearly things aren't well. Um, Sunan Ibrahim Acha 520. It was narrated that uh, Jabir bin uh, Abdullah said, We came to a pond in which there was a carcass of a donkey, so we refrained from using the water until the messenger of Allah came to us and said, Water is not made impure by anything. Uh, then we drank from it and gave it to our animals to drink, and we carried some with us. So, Mohammed showing off his unimpressive knowledge of water sanitation, uh, hygiene, and disease control. Well, that's it from me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this insight into Islamic teaching. Uh, in the next episode, uh, I will be looking into slavery and asking what color was Mohammed. But in the meantime, it's um, bye from me.